here not just to be able to chat with uh, Arzina and Sandra, which is a real pleasure for me, but also to be here um, because of all the important work that you do, right? Because we're all in this room because we understand that food is purely fuel and business transactions are business transactions, right? That's why we're here, right? No, right? Because we understand that food is so much more than fuel. And we understand that what happens at farmer's markets is so much more than business transactions, right? And so what we want to do briefly this morning, and I hope to continue this conversation with you in the, in the days ahead, is look at how do we understand all that food, all that farming, all that community brings, and how do we see those things together so we can understand how to build on all the fantastic work that happens that is so much beyond the nutrients that are transacted for money at a farmer's market, right? How do we see those things? How do we change those things together? Um, because there are so many benefits of food that we can't just tie down to one thing, right? And we each bring a different perspective of that. How do we hold those things together to really leverage that for more positive change? So it's going to be a quick session uh, this morning. I'm going to provide a little bit of an introduction, and then uh, Arzina and Sandra will kind of speak to different aspects of how we are able to then see and leverage connections. And Arzina will speak specifically to kind of increasing productions and making connections to markets. And Sandra will talk about increasing markets through local food procurement as examples for how we can build off of uh, a, a deeper understanding of the work that farmers markets is so integral in to look at how we change our food systems together and, and hope to then have a, a conversation, though it will be brief with you in this room, that we can then you know, carry on over the breaks and lunches and dinners and such. I often find the banquets, you know, as you've let the, 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 the thoughts of the day uh, stir in your mind and you've got you know, fresh food and nice drinks is, is when so many of those conversations conversations are, are so ripe. So that's what we're looking at. So food systems thinking is probably not something you've heard of before, which it's in some ways deliberately brought together to kind of give you a pause. And what is this guy talking about, right? So we can stand together and, and not jump to conclusions of what, I, what we mean together. So food systems, right? What are those? And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna come back to that. So it's a fusion of what are food systems and how do we understand the, the, the system around how food gets from where it is grown, where it is harvested, where it is sourced to people and how does that connect back and close loop. But then also talking about systems thinking, which is ultimately comes down to connections. How do we understand the connections between people, between issues, between elements, how do we understand the connections between producers and eaters? How do we understand connections between social and environmental issues, right? And how can we see these things and leverage these things better so that we can make the change we want to see? Because so often, uh, in, the, in the work that I do, whether that's working with schools or working with government, uh, the, there's, there's a line that's really resonating with me. Food is hidden in plain sight. People do not see how much food is everywhere and is critical to all so many issues. And until we can really surface that and see that, and then be able to then together, collaboratively in our communities and together in this room, together as a province, look at how we address these issues and how we leverage the multiple benefits, we're going to continue to kind of see food as, you know, something we, we just interact with in one way. And I think we really want to open that up a little bit. So, a little bit about what food systems thinking is, and, and, and this is kind of actually building off of Elizabeth and I and have been uh, working together more and more um, in, in, a, in a provincial initiative that I'll tell you about around kind of a, a healthy eating strategy. But Elizabeth's comments at one of the meetings really resonated with me, and I thought it was something we wanted to bring into this room around um, how do we understand the big picture and how we all fit within it so that we can together make the change that we want to see, right? Because no one of us is individually doing what is going to need to be happen to change the ways that we work with land and water to be able to make sure people are fed. But how do we understand how all these things fit together? So as we understand what is the food system, as we understand um, the ways that these things are all connected, how do we leverage that change? How do we work together to go as far as we need to go and as fast as we need to go to address the complexity of issues? So saying here with food systems thinking, complex issues are connected, right? So issues of why 
you know, it, it, it's challenging for farmers to access land and issues of why people are hungry might seem like totally disconnected issues. But if we look at these things together and come together around these issues, we can see patterns of how social and, and health and environmental and economic issues are linked and we need to hold those together and we need to look at how we address those, those issues together. Um, there are multiple actors in the system, right? So many of you here would, are producers. Some of you might be farmer's market operators, right? There's different aspects of the system, and we need to see those and see how they're connected, right? And this is kind of the, under, the aspect of understanding what is a food system, what is the role that each of us plays, what is the role that a farmer's market plays in the system, right? So there's different ways of understanding a system, and I realize it's a big room and you might not be able to see this, and it's not so much as understanding the text as just saying, we can understand a system as very kind of linear, you know, growing, harvesting, all the way to disposing of food, right? These are all the elements that do make up a system. But is that the way that helps us understand the, the depths and complexity of the issues? Or can we understand how it's actually more cyclical, and how they're actually more interconnected, and really to do the 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 uh, to do this justice with a, a system to understand what all the different aspects of it are, the interconnections, right? And here is another one that actually shows. So there's a different there's, there's farming and fishing and processing and distributing, but then how does this interact with 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 government and with business and imports and exports, right? It's we're, we're, it's, it's an academic exercise to get us frustrated with kind of understanding how that all the dots connect, but how all of our work together connects. And the, and the last picture I'll show on a system is just to say, hey, when we're standing on, in British Columbia, many of us, and in many areas, unceded territories, how do we actually also understand how agri-food systems fit with indigenous food systems and traditional hunting and gathering and, and fisheries and oceans, right? How do we understand those things together and how do we understand how we work together around these issues? So the last piece around seeing, right? How can we see the system and see the opportunities and make those connections? is really looking at how integrated solutions need to be applied. So, so often we can, we can answer one problem that I'm facing and that all that does is end up creating other problems. So um, one of my favorite thinkers and farmers, how many of you know who Wendell Berry is, right? So Wendell Berry is a, is a farmer, a poet, a philosopher, and he has actually a, a, an essay that's called Solving for Pattern. Okay? And in it, he's actually specifically talking about solving for pattern on a farm, but then talks about how that is something that can be applied across society. So when we look at one issue on a farm, you could solve it and then end up you know, moving your compost pile because of one issue here, and it might create a problem somewhere else. But what if we actually look at the patterns and the connections and actually look at how we can address one thing and it solves multiple problems? and actually has multiple knock-on positive effects, right? So it's about getting out of this kind of siloed thinking, looking at individual issues, looking at just the things we're working on, to rise up and looking at the farm as a whole, right? Looking at the society as a whole. How do we do this better together? So getting on to leveraging, right? So you, know, you can think of a lever as a tool that makes it easier to be able to you know, either lift something or pull something further. How do we understand, with, when we understand how we can work together, what are the pieces where we might be able to push and see a deeper level of transformative change, right? So maybe there's ways to connect, right, with farmer's market, some of the work that's happening around the coupon program would be a great example of this. We're looking at, you are looking at connecting issues across Social, health, economic, right? So we're, we're seeing uh, vulnerable populations have better access to food, but we're also seeing income for farmers, right? So let's look at how these issues are all interconnected, right? And, and I think there's really looking at those multiple benefits, multiple impacts that we can do, right? So that's, that's solving for pattern, right? We're not just addressing one individual issue. How can we connect these different pieces across health, environment, justice, and economic? How can we also make connections between different scales? And what I mean by that is, right, so great in your individual communities, there's programs like the coupon program that are making connections across these issues. But what do we, as a province, what opportunities are there for to look at those things, right? So let's continue to support programs and community level initiatives that are addressing these issues. But can we step back and actually also look at what are the, some of the systemic issues around why are people hungry, right? Why is it that there's a challenge around viability in farming? Those are two pretty key essential questions. What opportunities do we together, as individuals, as voters, as community members, actually address these to create the kind of province we want, to create the communities we want? So can we look at 
policies and opportunities to address some of these deeper questions, right? And none of us can do this alone, but I think we can do it together. And I'm excited to have, it, it's such a great opportunity to have different levels of government here, right? Because this is an issue that we collectively need to address. And I think each of you represent the different communities you bring here, and how can you take that back with you and, and, and continue to have a thriving farmer's market, but how does that also connect to so many other things that are going on in your community that you know and I don't, right? So how do we do that well? Um, and this piece is critical. Engaging and aligning diverse actors. To be able to address complex issues and food systems when you understand the, the complexity of all the social and ecological dimensions of them are about as complex as there is out there, right? So when I say complex, complex is different than simple or complicated, right? So the people will say there's, there's simple problems, there's complicated problems, and there's complex problems. Simple problems is cooking an egg, okay? Pretty simple. We can all do it, right? You follow instructions, you can address a problem. How do I go from a raw egg to a cooked egg? When I talk about a complicated problem is, you know, sending a, a rocket to the moon. How many of you guys know how to send a rocket to the moon? How many of you, you know, I'm not, I don't, don't put your hand up here, but if you actually got the training and went through all the things, we actually, we know how to do that. There's, there's, there, it's, it's complicated, it's challenging, but it's not, it's, it's doable, right? And then we talk about complex problems where there's so many different things moving, it's dynamic, they're changing, and it's not like, hey, I could come up with the answer individually to be able to address this issue. This is a complex issue. And food systems in our communities, in the way they connect to everything, are complex issues. And to address complex issues, we need to work together. Right? So we need to bring the different aspects of the system together. Farmers and eaters and politicians and fishers and, and indigenous nations and schools and all these pieces to come together and say, how do we address these issues? How do we continue to pay attention to these issues? And how do we see how they all interconnect? And how, man, maybe this is the, the, the most challenging and maybe the most fun part of it all, how do we get our governments, which represent us collectively, to think that way? and to not see things in silos, and really talk about the connections around um, kind of what, what, what often gets called kind of a whole of government, whole of society approach. This can't be the Ministry of Agriculture. It can't be the Ministry of Health. It can't be the city of Surrey. This really has to be all of these pieces. And how do we hold that together across the different ministries, across the different scales? And really, it's about action. Right? So if we can then understand this, if we can move forward together, how can we develop strategies that are able to solve for pattern, are able to make these connections? Right? So I'm excited now to be able to ask uh, Arzina first and then Sandra to come up and, and to, to talk about specific pieces where there's opportunities for kind of seeing and leveraging connections. And what I want you to do is they are both uh, powerful and dynamic speakers that are going to bring some fa fascinating ideas. After they've finished, what I want you to do is, I want you to, we're going to have an opportunity to kind of reflect and share together, where do you see connections, either in your own community, for you to kind of connect with other initiatives, with your, within your own market, across different markets, or at a provincial level? How can we see and leverage these connections better together?